As a newer cuber, you might have come across those weird letters in cubing videos or on cube timers. This is called cube notation. These are actually used so that you know what turns to do on the cube. There are two main parts of it, the letter and then either nothing, a two or an apostrophe, which we cubers call prime. The letter determines which face you are going to turn and if there is no apostrophe or prime, then that means you will do the turn clockwise. And if there is an apostrophe, then you are going to do the turn counterclockwise. If there is a two, then you will turn it around 180 degrees, which is two turns all the way around. Now let's learn what the letters mean. R is for the right side. L is for the left side. F is for the front side. And B is for the back side. U is for the up side. And D is for the down side. Now, putting these two things together, it's time for some examples. So on screen, you'll see R prime, which will be R for the right side. And since there's an apostrophe or a prime next to it, it's gonna go counterclockwise. So if you imagine if this was on the front, then you want it to go counterclockwise since there's the prime. So we can do it like this. And that's R prime. Next, we have what's on the screen is L2, which is the left side. And since it has a two, we're gonna do it around twice. So one, two, and so that's an L2. Next, we have D prime, and it's D for down, so it's gonna be this bottom face. And then imagining that we brought it to the front, since there's a prime, we're gonna want it to go counterclockwise, so that would be this way. And so that would make this move, that's D prime. Next, we have B. So it's B for back, and it's not already, uh, we're not already looking at it the right way. So uh, B wouldn't be like this, the way that it would move if it was like this. Because remember, we need to think of it as if it was at the front. So if it was B, not B prime, like in this case, then it's gonna go clockwise, which is this way. And so if we do that at the back, then B is this. In online cubing software, like CS Timer, you will most of the time see a long string of this notation at the top. It is important with these scrambles that you start with the green center on the front and the white center on the top. Now let's do a practice one of these scrambles, combining everything we've learned so far. L prime, F2, L, U2, R prime, B2, L prime, D2, B2, D2, B2, U prime, B prime, L prime, U prime, B, F2, L, R2, F prime, R. If you got the scramble right, then your cube should look like this. If that was too fast, feel free to go back and slow the video down and just do it at your own pace. Now pause the video and give this one a go by yourself. If you got the scramble right, then it should look something like this. Now you'll be able to follow scrambles and basic algorithms. However, there are two more things to know that can be found in more advanced algorithms that we are going to learn right now. The first thing is called wide moves. If there is a W at the end of a move, then that means you have to do what is called a wide move. It just means that you have to grab the inner layer when you do the move as well. So for example, RW prime would be just like a normal R prime, except you also grab the middle layer with it. So this would be RW prime. Another example is FW, which would be just like a normal F, except we also are grabbing the inner layer with it, like that. 
Another way that people sometimes denote wide moves is by making it lowercase. For example, a lowercase f would mean the same thing as fw, which is just like this. The second more advanced thing to note is slice moves. There are three slice moves. They are M, S, and E. M is for middle, so it's the middle layer in between these two. S apparently stands for standing, but I like to pretend it stands for silly because the M slice is standing as well, but whatever. So the S slice is going to be like this. So going along like this. And then E stands for equator because it goes along the middle, just like the equator. For slice moves, depending on which way you think about it, either direction can be clockwise or counterclockwise. This means that we have to know which way to think about it in order to get it right. For the M slice, in your head you can turn the cube like this to the left, and then you can think about it like we did with the clock where this way is clockwise and this way is counterclockwise. So if we had M prime, so it would be the M layer, M for middle, counterclockwise, then we would think of it like this, and counterclockwise is going this way, which means that the M prime would go up like this. For the S slice, we're already looking at it the right way. So if it's clockwise, then you can move it clockwise, or if it's S prime, which is counterclockwise, then you can just move it counterclockwise like that. For the E slice, imagine rotating the cube sort of down like this. So if we had E prime, which is E counterclockwise, then remember E is for equatorial, so it's along the middle, down like this. Then counterclockwise goes this way, and so that's how our E would go. And so doing it from here, so it's E prime would be like this. Now let's do some examples with slice moves. S prime is S for standing or silly or whatever you want to call it. And so that goes counterclockwise for S prime. And so that's going to be like this. M2 is the middle layer. And since it has a two, we're going to move it around twice like that. E for equatorial. So around the middle like this. We're going to rotate it down and since it's not prime it's just a normal e it's going to go clockwise so around like this so bring it around like that it would go this way now let's do some examples using wide moves and slice moves let's do this algorithm together s prime r u r prime s u prime m prime u R, U prime, wide R prime. Let's do this one together as well. R prime, E, R, U prime, R prime, E prime, R, U. Now pause the video and give this one a try by yourself. If you did the algorithm correctly, your cube should look like this. There you go, that's everything you need to know about 3x3 notation. I hope this tutorial helped you learn cube notation and good luck with your future cubing. <laughs>